the future we'll be able to meet again in person. <clears throat> uh, one of the um, one of the facets of the meetings we've done is we try to invite somebody who's outside of EA 234 to come and speak with us um, to share their views and also you know to uh, get them to um, uh, understand and know who 234 is. So. Uh, <clears throat> I was up in the AA office, which is in the old uh, GA building, and the uh, uh, I saw a, a twin-engine plane that I knew came out of a Beaver Island stop and picked up a couple of passengers. So I decided that would be a pretty cool experience to talk to uh, to uh, uh, the Welkies uh, about their business. And they, uh, for those that don't know, they're on uh, uh, Beaver Island. They run uh, Wilkie um, International, is it? And they. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, they've, uh, they have a really pretty interesting career and the, um, and the last reason I'm, uh, I wanted to bring them aboard is I got to get off my, uh, off my bum and fly up there to Welke. So I think Jim, you had a question. You want to know if Welke is open to the public? Kirsten, you want to unmute him? Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. Welke is you're on. All right. Thank you for having us so much. Um, I know part of the discussion is you're going to chat with Paul about his aviation career and then part of it is about the company as a whole. So I'm Angel Welke, this is my husband Paul Welke. Uh, and yes, Welke is open to the public. We're a private airport open to the public. And one of my favorite facts about uh, Welke Airport, based on passenger employments, it's the 13th busiest airport in the state of Michigan. <laughs> That's cool. Last year we had, uh, I'm gonna do just a little bit of background on the company and I know you had some questions about how we've been dealing with COVID and right. uh, so I, I, that's always the part of the introduction I do and then I turn over the aviation piece of it to Paul. Um, so we are a 135 carrier. We own, own and operate Welke Airport and based at Welke Airport is Island Airways. It's uh, actually McPhillips Flying Service doing business as Island Airways and Welke Aviation. And McPhillips was founded in 1945 by the McPhillips family in Charlevoix. And I'm gonna just throw out a bunch of fun facts as this whole thing goes on. And if you have any questions that I don't answer here, I'll give you my email in a, in a bit and you can send them to me. Uh, usually as my, uh, little summary goes on, the questions start to pile up. Um, so it was started in 1945 and right now in 2020, Island Airways has what we believe is the oldest airmail contract in the continental United States. It's been in continuous service with the same certificate since 1945. So a little background on the company, in a typical year, we haul about 30,000 passengers and about 1.6 million pounds of freight. Uh, I'm going to weave in a little bit of how COVID has affected us, just so you get an idea. Uh, as the year has gone on, we really shut down We usually have uh, a big St. Patrick's Day celebration on Beaver Island. And uh, in a typical St. Patrick's celebration, we'll bring about 250 people to Beaver Island. This year, we were down about 50% because the the um, panic was just sort of starting and the, the, the severity of the, the pandemic was really starting to kick in. So in uh, March, we were down about 40% overall passenger wise for the month. In April, we, I still hate saying this number, we were down 96%, 96%. In May, we started to see some improvement. We were only down 40%. Uh, then in June, July, August, and September of 2019 uh, were record years. So we really can't compare our passenger numbers to, to 2019 just because it was such a, a busy year. Uh, so what we did was develop a 30 year average of what our passengers look like. And in June, we actually bypassed, I'm sorry, we were down 4% over our 30 year average. And in July, we bypassed our 30 year average by about 5%. Keeping in mind, July 2019 was a record. We were only down 14% from our record. Um, one thing that COVID has brought us this year is an incredible amount of freight. 
our boat didn't start running, our ferry didn't start running until April. So we had, I'm sorry, until May 1. Um, so we did all of the perishable freight through the entire month of April, which we usually do not do. The other thing COVID has done, uh, people are really coming to Beaver Island prepared to go in the, to their cabin or their rental house or their hotel and not come out to see the world. Uh, before this year, the average passenger brought 50 to 75 pounds of stuff. Right now, it's not uncommon for a couple traveling to be around for a week to bring 1,000 pounds of stuff. 1,000 pounds. Uh, it's enough to spend a week or two or three on Beaver Island and never leave the house, other than for maybe a gallon of milk and an ice cream cone at Daddy Frank's. Um, some other interesting things that have happened were the, were the UPS, uh, FedEx, and U.S. mail carrier. In the month of July, we did not have one day that we didn't haul over 1,000 pounds of UPS to the island. There's just that much more stuff coming to the island for people to be able to live here and, and stay here and visit here. We actually have people who are coming just for a week on the island sending things to themselves via UPS or FedEx because they're guaranteed whatever they need. If there's some special something they need, they can get it here. Um, in a typical year, as I said, we haul about 1.6 million pounds of freight. So that involves all of the mail, the UPS, the FedEx, the ferry stops running mid-December. So we do all of the perishable goods for the grocery store, the restaurants, the bars, and the school. One of the favorite things that I think we do on, at Island Airways, we have a contract with the school to provide all of their transportation. So that's their day-to-day -day travel, any specialists coming from the Charlevoix school system. Um, but we also get to take the kids to all of their away games. So on a typical Friday, we'll, in the fall, we'll take the soccer and volleyball teams to the UP, to Mackinac Island or to Manistique or to Newberry. They play a volleyball game and a soccer game on Friday night. They spend the night in the school gym. They have a party with the kids there. Then they do another set of games on Saturday and we go get them. Then we reverse the whole thing for their, their opponents. We'll fly to Mackinac Island, get the teams and bring them to the island. And they do the same thing here. It is truly one of the most special things I think we do. We're still waiting to see if we're going to be able to do that this year. They're not quite sure what athletics is going to look like for our school this year. Um, I'm going through it all pretty quickly just so you guys have some time for questions because I, I have found doing these presentations, the, the best part is we get to answer your questions and that's you know where we find what everyone about is curious about Beaver Island. So we, uh, Paul and his family moved to the island in the late 60s and created Welke Airport in 69. 69. And it sort of evolved. They did not have a charter certificate when they moved here. But people, the way his mother always told me, uh, people would stop out. They always had uh, several airplanes in the family, like a. Um, so people would come out, hey, if you're going to Charlotte, could you drop this off for my Aunt Susie? Or could you pick up my, my medication at Central Drug and bring it back to me? So they started uh, Welke Aviation with one Piper Apache. And at the end of their first year, they had three of them. So uh, in the early 80s, Welke Aviation merged with McPhillips Flying Service to create the company as it's known today, Island Airways. Uh, we still operate under the McPhillips certificate because the airmail contract was attached to it. So that was the, the certificate they opted to keep in service. Um, so we still haul the mail six days a week. We pick it up at the Charlevoix post office, get it to the airport, weigh it, put it on the 8.30 flight every morning. Um, we're, we're an on-demand unscheduled carrier, but for the mail, we have an 8.30 flight to the island every day and the mail goes off. We reverse the whole thing, drive the incoming mail to the post office here, grab the outgoing and reverse the whole thing. Um, in a typical day in the winter when the ferry's not running, we have a very set schedule with the local grocery store. Their meat comes on Monday, their dairy order comes on Tuesday. 
the all important Wednesday beer and whiskey delivery. That's the everyone's favorite day of the week. Um, so that's sort of a, a little glimpse of what we do at Island Airways. What kind of questions do you have? And then we'll talk a little bit more about how we've dealt with COVID in the operation. Why don't you ask me a couple questions? The, uh, yeah. What kind of, uh, and how many aircraft do you have? How many pilots do you have? A really good question. We operate four Britain Norman Islanders, a Piper Apache and a Piper Aztec. Right now we have six pilots. We have two full-time pilots who do alternating four-day, three-day weeks. Paul's a pilot. Um, he flies probably a lot more than he wants to right now. Our director of maintenance is also a pilot. We have a part-time pilot who's worked for us for nearly 40 years. Uh, he fills in on weekends and when we get really busy. And we have another young man from the Traverse City area um, whose job was terminated. terminated because of COVID. So he came back and he's working part-time for us this summer until his job situation fills out. Um, and I think I see Bill Julian on here and we were in the process of working with Bill. Hi guys. Hi, how are you doing Bill? Good, I, I'm not a Zoom expert yet, so I don't have my video going, but nice to see you guys. Good to see you too. Um, so we're hoping to get Bill on board as a part-time pilot. Um, and we also have all of our, the other thing that I, I should have mentioned, we do all of our maintenance here. We're based on Beaver Island. Our main maintenance hangar is here. And we have five uh, mechanics. We have two full-time mechanics based here. Our director of maintenance is based here. Paul's a mechanic as well. We have a part-time summer mechanic who's a longtime summer resident. He worked for us full-time for years and retired, and he just fills in when we get busy in the summer. And then we have a young man from Gaylord who uh, flies over every morning on the 8.30 flight with the mail and works on Beaver Island all day, five days a week. <laughs> we also do outside maintenance, Paul just mentioned. Um, that's, that has... Uh, Something we have a we have about 25 regular maintenance customers. We do annuals and other stuff, and uh, it's surprising how many things happen when people are flying over Beaver Island and they land and have a little issue. And it's pretty handy dandy to have a full out shop here at Wilkie Airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So look at <laughs> Any more questions? On Any there? other questions? Hey, uh, so you you guys fly an IMC. <laughs> Icing the whole, the whole deal. We have one. Our Piper Aztec is is the only fully de-iced aircraft we have. Um, <clears throat> as far as flying from Beaver Island to Charlevoix, 99.9 percent .9 is all VFR. Because our VFR minimums, part 135, is 500 foot ceiling and two miles visibility. <clears throat> the, the GPS, the only GPS approach here is 400 and one so it's pretty rare that we would fly ifr with that you know such a close tolerance between vfr and ifr minimums uh, charlevoix has a, charlevoix has an lpv approach down to 250 feet and three quarters of a mile if the island gets something like that then we could do much more ifr flying but right now it's pretty much all vfr and the uh, um, are you the manager at North Fox also? I'm I'm the assistant there manager. I just I'm I'm the person locally. If there's a problem, that I would respond to it. Oh. Like there was years ago with the accident there. Right. Last was that last year? Or the year before. Uh, year before. Year before, I think. Yeah. Oh. So okay. pretty unfortunate, but fortunately. Everybody survived. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, and I just I, saw the question that yes, I think I answered it though. That yes, you can land here. We have tie downs. We have uh, loaner cars. Um, we have a grand fleet of I think we're up to nine loaner cars. Um, <laughs> if you want to land here, some of them are real peaches, and uh, you're you're welcome. To use you're welcome them. to yeah. use them. We'd love to have you. Is it uh, is the is the island busy? 
give me that one one more time. I didn't hear that. Is your uh, is the island busy? Uh, we're getting there. Um, I'm on the Chamber of Commerce. It's been quite an interesting time to market the island. Um, we we have found a real balance between safety and we've lost every event on the island. Um, we usually kick off the season with a birding event and end the season with uh, an Irish festival, an Irish music <laughs> festival. Everything has been canceled. Um, our ridership has leveled out a lot. The boat company has been down a lot. It, it's it's much harder to social distance in in their uh, situation. They have capacity on the large fare of 250 people, but social distancing is very challenging. So they were limiting numbers of people on the boat. So I would say overall the island is down 20 to 30 percent. Um, and it's typically this time of year downtown is very it's buzzing you know it, the year-round population on Beaver Island is about 450 to 500 people on July 4th we can have as many as three to four thousand people here in an average August week we'll have um, 1,500 to 2,500 people on the island we're not there but there's also not a rental home or hotel room available until the second week of September. So there are a lot of people here, but a lot of our summer residents, I'd say about 20% of our summer residents did not come home this year. They, they decided to shelter wherever they winter instead of coming here. They were already in quarantine there, so they maintained that. So that 20% is probably five, 500 to 1,000 people who haven't come home this year. Sort of, sort of the opposite of Leland. Leland is just cheek by jowl with people and they've come up and came, come up early and they stayed. So that's- No, uh, we had a very late start. Uh, with the ferry not running, a lot of our summer people come back on the ferry and the ferry got such a late start that changed everything. And not all of our summer residents have vehicles on the island. So they rely on the ferry to get their vehicles here. And so that has, we've seen that decline and it is certainly not as crowded as other Northern Michigan communities. I was in Charlevoix the other day and it was busy. Yeah. It's not like that on Peter Island. We are incredibly fortunate to be maintaining what we're maintaining. And Paul and I will be the first two to tell you how, how fortunate we are that our numbers are as steady as they are. Um, we have a lot of repeat business. <laughs> Beaver Island business model, Every all the first time visitors come on the ferry. It's less expensive and it's part of the adventure. You're taking a two and a half hour yeah. ferry ride. What we typically get are repeat homeowners and island residents who don't need the two, two and a half hour adventure. They just want to get where they're going. Yeah. Or if they're a summer resident, they want to maximize their time on the island. We're about $20 more expensive than the boat. Passenger. For passengers, per, per each way. So for 20 bucks to get an extra three hours on Beaver Island is probably worth it. So sure. we get that repeat business where the boat company gets the beginning business. Right. So uh, how do you distance on the aircraft? On, on the, um... It's a really good question. Um, you can't. You really, you know, it, it, yeah. the Islanders are nine passenger aircraft. What we did from day one, I think we might have been the first company in Michigan, we required masks on all passengers. And uh, there have been, in that time since we were shut down on, uh, up here our school was shut down on Friday, March 13th. That's a date that will stay in my mind for a very long time. We required masks from that point if you're going to travel with us. We also implemented very, very quickly, um, we decontaminate the plane with a spray uh, germicide that is rated to kill as, as much as the TB germ. It's, it's a really potent germicide. So we do that not after each flight, but after each leg. After every time a passenger gets out of the airplane, the entire plane from front to back is sprayed the doors are left open and allowed to dry. And within um, 
we're also the the air ambulance provider for the for the island and out of necessity we had uh the pagers went off in april um it was a very challenging day i'm going to admit uh we we hadn't really that was the day it became that was the day covid became real they paged out that we had a positive covid case that needed to be transported to the covid unit in traverse city and so paul is the director of operations the chief pilot and the chief pilot at island airways i'm the president um neil is our director of maintenance and mary is our general manager and when they called we didn't quite know what to do um so we actually had a phone managers meeting on the ramp outside the hangar before we put the stretcher in the airplane because we weren't going to do it unless all four of us agreed on, if, april, 1st. on april 1st and paul was going to be the pilot so everything was pretty new um and when covid hit home for me was the moment i saw our local ems put paul in full PPE. He was in a full, it, he looked like a spaceman. And um, I'll refer you to our Island Airways Facebook page. There's a picture of him on it. And I'll be honest with you, it still chokes me up. Um, we agreed on several levels that, you know, we had to do this because this is part of our job here on the island. But the plane didn't come out of the, the hangar until our mechanics had installed uh, a barrier between the passenger compartment and the cockpit and it's still in all four of the islanders so the the pilot is separated from the passengers and part of it is the pilots are interacting with upwards of 200 people a day and that's really given our passengers a level of comfort and they see us spraying the airplane. They see the doors open on the ramp. They see the crew going out with the cans and wiping it down. And they see the barrier in the airplane. Plus, we, we used to put a passenger in the co-pilot seat, but we don't do that anymore. We keep all the passengers behind the barrier. Right. So For the pilot's protection. Really. Right. So no, we cannot social distance. Um, but we do take every precaution that we can. And um, one of the line items in our budget this year that has certainly gone up are airplane cleaning supplies. And we have, uh, in March, I, I, ordered, I ordered supplies every day hoping they would get here. And they're still trickling in. Not a day goes by that I don't get another package of masks because we were providing them for our passengers and we still insist you cannot come into either of our facilities. You cannot come into our Welke Airport terminal to pick up a package unless you have a mask. If you don't have one, we'll take your package out to you or we will give you a mask. Um, we are still getting uh, the, the germicide every day. You know, we're, we're really taking it seriously. Um, it is. It has been quite the learning curve. I will admit. I think I saw a picture of the two of you with the, uh, of the barrier in back. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So and that's great. a really good question. I just saw. Do you want me to do the questions as they pop up, or do you sure. want to do them at the end? As they pop up, go for it. Okay. Um, the biggest issue with winter operations, um, snow removal. Uh, you know, we have a very simple de-icing plan at Island Airways. It's put the plane in a heated hangar and wait for the weather to get better. And one of the most common questions we get when we do presentations is, uh, you know, how, how many days do you lose in a year to weather? It's really not, not as common as you would think. In 2019, I think we had probably 25 days affected by weather. Days we didn't fly at all, I think there were three days we just didn't even open the hangar doors. Um, Paul is very conscientious about, um, you know, if someone has an appointment and it looks like the weather's going to be bad on Wednesday and they're having a total hip replacement on Friday, we'll start calling people on Monday. The weather doesn't look good. Get out of here. Um, we ask all of the pregnant women to leave the island. We would prefer they leave months early, but sometimes they leave weeks early. 
but we will ask, you know, we'll say if it's coming into January, we can't guarantee we're going to get you out of here in a timely manner when, when it's the little guy's time. What's unique about here is that we know everybody at first name basis. Right. Right. We know everybody's situation, et cetera. And then uh, the, the snow removal here, we handle the snow removal at Welke, uh, Paul, and we have a, a full-time sort of a flex person who just does a little bit of everything and they do all the plowing. And Charlevoix is plowed by the city of Charlevoix and we have a really good working relationship with them for uh, they understand how urgent it is that they keep the airport open and operational for us to, you know, particularly in the winter for the air ambulance operation. Normal altitude on the Beaver Island Charlevoix run. Um, remember, we fly between M MSL 1,500 feet to 3,000 feet, and personally, I do it more on based on the, the load of the airplane. The air, heavier it is, the higher I fly. It's more of a safety aspect. And we've had, <clears throat> there's a considerable amount of traffic, especially this time of year, between Charlevoix and Beaver Island because it's, a, it's the shortest distance. And uh, so it's, it's kind of like the I-75 of the air. And so we all have, uh, each pilot has an ADS-B receiver and an iPad. So we, now we have the benefit of, besides seeing and avoiding, we got electronics that tell us what's up, what else is out there. And it's been, it's been an amazing addition to our safety line. Yeah. ADS-B is pretty, pretty amazing. <clears throat> Have you seen any degradation in the ATT services? Uh, no. The, the only thing I noticed early on was the fact that Traverse City tra air traffic uh, control tower was limited, I think, eight hours a day, and that surprised me. Yeah, it was uh, went to eight to four, and it's now at eight to five, yeah. Yeah, I showed up there a couple of times after it was closed. What a mess that was. Two, you know, two airlines trying to come in and talk to all the Rainy airplanes flying around. That was that was not a safe situation at all. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty uh, it's pretty crazy when the towers closed. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't know how to fly that way. So, right. Cool. What other questions we got? It's, it's pretty amazing for quiet for pilots to be quiet. They usually have there's four pilots. There's five opinions. So, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so I have a feeling you guys have some questions for Paul as an aviator. That would be my gut feeling. I've done my spiel on the company and the the questions. Do you have any other COVID related questions or? Uh, uh, the, you've handled it uh, pretty well. This is trying time. So. I, I, and I will say it again, we've been incredibly fortunate and uh, you know, we're, we're plugging along and People have been really understanding. I, I know some other businesses in Northern Michigan are having problems with uh, unruly, uh, unruly customers. Our, our customers have been incredibly gracious and caring and thoughtful. And we have not had any problems with masks or any crappy attitudes. Um, you know, we're all in it together. And I think that's one thing that Beaver Island's really trying to do, we revamped the whole chamber update to Beaver Island strong and uh, pure, simple, and resilient. And resilient is, I think, what we're all trying to do. It's what the, our school's trying to do, and it's what we're trying to do at the airline. It's what the grocery store <laughs> owner and the restaurant owners are trying to do. Um, so I'm in a transition. I'm gonna give you guys just a little background on this guy. Um, and I'm sure some of you have looked at a little bit. Um, I, I've never been prouder than the day I got to introduce Paul when he won the Wright Brothers Award and the Charles Taylor Award, um, both for lifetime service, one as a pilot, one as a mechanic. Um, and he's, he's been featured several times in Northern Michigan. The most recent feature, I, one of my favorites was on, um, in Traverse Magazine about the company and how unique it is in Northern Michigan. You know, it's it's so unusual and he hates it when I say this, but we're really a mom and pop company. It was started by his parents. Here we are all these years later, 
still doing the same thing, taking care of people on Beaver Island and getting their dogs and cats and groceries and prescriptions here. It hasn't changed that much in, in 50 years. So I am going to go work on some charters and he is going to answer a bunch of questions about aviation. Okay. And if you guys have any questions or would like more information, my email is really easy. It's angel at islandairways.com. <laughs> it's that easy. So here he is. Enjoy your aviation talk. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. If anybody has any questions? Paul, well, where else do you fly? Oh, we we do charters throughout the Midwest. <clears throat> um, I've been this year to Toledo twice, Chicago twice. Uh, we're not doing as much long distance like that as we have in the past, <clears throat> mostly because we're, <clears throat> we've been so busy here on Beaver Islands, we tend not to take too many long distance trips. Uh, we do a lot, a fair amount to Traverse City. We connect um, commercial airline, people traveling commercially to Beaver Island from anywhere in the world is gonna end up in Traverse City or Pelston to get here. 99% of that's Traverse City. Right. So we do four or five trips a week to tra out of Traverse for that purpose. Right. And you don't have any Part 135 operations up in the UP then, do you? Uh, we go regularly to Manistique in the UP. It's, it's about 30, right. 32 miles. Yep. Uh, we, get, we get customers that come out of Minneapolis, uh, Milwaukee area, and it's, and it's a much small, shorter distance to drive. And, that's, and we do that on a charter basis as opposed okay. to per seat basis at Charlotte. Okay, all right. <clears throat> we probably do that. We go there three, four times a week. So um, what's it like flying into North Fox? Any, um, anything special? Anything? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little strip, um, but I, I don't particularly care about it because the, each approach in is the trees are as high as the side sides they're, they're all 80 feet and that was a problem that was a problem you know when they had the collision there <clears throat> you know the pilot sitting on one end to take off and the other the, the landing guy was coming over the trees nobody could see anybody <clears throat> and in that particular situation it turns out that the pilot landing was on 22.8 and the pilot taking off was on 22.9 <clears throat> so that's my 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 biggest thing I, I harp on nowadays going to uh, <clears throat> unattended airport no 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 Unicom you absolutely got to use twenty two nine I I have always done it, at least um, monitored it you know and listened on twenty two eight also because everybody else does both yeah, but now I broadcast on both frequencies and it's kind right. of a wake up call. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. I tried to send a question over chat. I, I guess it didn't go through, but my question is, uh, what is the distance uh, from Beaver Island to Charlevoix? And are you required to carry a raft or life vests or what is, uh, what's required under 135 for that? Um, <clears throat> the distance between um, six Yankee eight and Charlevoix is 27 nautical miles. Uh, from the, clo the closest point of land, which is like the southeast corner of the island to Charlotte, is about 20 nautical miles. Um, we've always operated twin engine aircraft because um, single engines are required to be a gliding distance of land. You'd have to be like five, 6,000 feet for that. Uh, we're required by Part 135 to carry. Um, <clears throat> basically life preservers, personal, personal, you know, support. Yeah. We have to have a flare gun, you know, and a certain six flares with it. And that's, that's about our, the limit of it. Yeah. Well, does that part of the lake freeze over pretty much every year if you had to crash uh, land? I mean, what? Uh... That, our, our track between Beaver Island and Charlotte uh, rarely freezes over. Okay. Enough to support. Uh, I think twice in the in my time here. First one was 1975, and I think the last recently was 2014. 
And in both those occasions, people walked from Charlevoix to Beaver Island. <laughs> okay. And yeah, we got Whatever. we got people do that walk out to the Manitou from here also. Yeah. Crazy. There you go. Uh, well, I'm have to stop out there sometime. I've heard of you. I flew for North Central and Republic, so I flew all around the area, and I knew about you guys, but I just never, never got out there. My, my that's days good. off. I'll have to get out there. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome to come out. Can you? Uh, any problem retaining uh, pilots or mechs? I'm sorry. Any uh, problem retaining either pilots or mechanics? Um. Yeah, it's. Gen generally not, you know, we always <clears throat> a few here and there. <clears throat> um, since, since COVID hit, I probably had the last 10 pilots, pilots, low time pilots tend to move on after a couple of years. Right. <clears throat> and, and the only time I would hire low time pilots was because you couldn't hire anybody. You know, so. <laughs> but they, we know, we know it's a, just a short stop for them. But since COVID hit, probably eight of my last pilots left called back, called looking for work. Yeah. And, pro and probably I got a hundred other pilots, you know. Uh, Standing in line, right. Del Delta 737 pilot called me, who I, who I knew not real well. And he was probably in his 50s and he says, I, I don't foresee me ever going back to work. And he was a captain on a 737. Right. That's really unfortunate. You've talked to Alex Bloy at um, at um, the college. Um, he foresees nothing but uh, being able to place all these uh, all these students. Yeah, I know. That's one of the wild. Yeah, what a shame. Yeah, and I, and I don't see I don't see much of a change in the anytime soon. <clears throat> but right now, the we were very, we've been very fortunate. You know, we, we applied for every financial bailout support and we we're fortunate to do well there. And to the point where I know we're, we're gonna survive no matter how bad it is. <clears throat> and, uh, and this went from like Delta Airlines down to little old Island Airways. <clears throat> and and a great deal, part of it was uh, payroll support, and which, which we've taken advantage of that. <clears throat> that all expires on Oct sometime in October. Yep. And all the airline pilots know that when that expires, that half of them are gonna be laid off. And right now, Congress, I mean, here I am, Little Island Airways. We're worried about what's going on in Congress. <clears throat> when, when that supports, when that when that finally, if it doesn't make it, a lot of people are going to be out of work in the airline industry. And we'll, we'll, be fine. Um, we'll, we'll survive. At a lot of places, won't. A lot of right. small, small marginal operators will not survive. Yeah, um, I think uh, Delta's already has a plan, or the union has a plan. Exit, uh, exit before it's a uh, it gets uglier. So I hope wow. so. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> Jim Sarbid, did you have did you have a question? Jim Sarbid, is he still on board with us? <clears throat> there he is, right there. Yeah, <clears throat> you're, you're muted, Jim. So. <clears throat> the uh, uh, the aircraft on the island are um, are they uh, your rounders for the most part? Your, the uh, the other aircraft on the field. Um, we have there's probably thirty or forty privately owned hangars here on the airport, and um, most of which are uh, they're not aircraft are not based here. They they live somewhere else to come here, in, you know, in the busy season. There's right. probably yeah. there's probably twelve based airplanes here on, okay. on Wealthy Airport, and probably three or four at the Township Airport SJX. <clears throat> um, but it's a there's probably only a half a dozen active.
private pilots living on the island right now. Did the, uh, um, did the county airport SJX precede you or was it, was it there when you guys? Uh, that, that was built um, right after World War II. Okay. Uh, we, we started on, on this in the mid 60s. My parents bought a farm, this farm from the Gallagher family in the mid 60s and then we started working on this airstrip on the summer times we came here and completed pretty much by the late 60s with my parents my parents moved here in 1969 i was halfway through college and i continued to finish that and i was here by 71 full time <clears throat> and in 1975 we started wilkie aviation <clears throat> not that that was our real intention but there was just so much business to be had out there. We figured we'd buy one Apache and <clears throat> our best hope <laughs> was to pay for the airplane. And here we are. There you are, yeah. <clears throat> How does the TSA handle your operation there? Because we're non-scheduled operation, we're just a charter operation. Okay. And, and what, what differentiates us from part 135 <clears throat> to be be considered scheduled, you have to publish publish your schedule. And we do not publish your schedule. Oh, okay. Even, even though we leave every morning, Charles at 8 30 and do a trip every hour on the half hour from there and every hour on the hour from here. We're not considered scheduled. Thank God. So, so you're flying the students from Beaver Island to Charlevoix, huh? Is that how you do that? Your uh, school? Yeah, for school. No, no, we have a we have a K through twelve here, oh. and uh, they have a big sports program that we throughout soccer season, uh, basketball, volleyball, and then on it's a weekend thing. We we take them someplace throughout. There's about six or eight schools throughout the Upper Peninsula, which are small, similar to the Beaver Island Community mm -hmm. School, <clears throat> and we take them there on a Friday, they play their games Friday night and Saturday morning, and then we pick them up Saturday midday -ish. Okay. Paul, how, how big is the school? How many kids? Um, it, it's, a, it's a great facility. It was built probably to support 200 students. Um, it's down to like 54, last I heard. Um, it's been as many as uh, 110 probably. <clears throat> but the, the the young family population has you know diminished here in recent years. Yeah, so we have a, we have great, you know great teachers here. <clears throat> the classes are there's like five to six students in each class, so there <clears throat> the school is planning on opening you know this this fall in, in schools. Because it's a huge facility, um, <clears throat> uh, distance, distancing is not a problem, an issue. <clears throat> um, standard size classroom with six kids in it's not not a problem. <clears throat> so Angel's on the school board, and so I get to stay stay abreast of what's going on there. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? I'm very silent. The, uh, uh, I'd like to put you on our um, uh, 234 mailing list. <clears throat> you know, uh, once this uh, once this goofy times are passed, you know, uh, every second Thursday we're in upstairs of the GA building. I've seen you come come in and out of there a couple times. So uh, yeah, I'd love, love to come come down to one of your meetings so we we'll get yeah. back to normal. We're uh, we're. <laughs> We're 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 ecstatic, overjoyed at uh, being able to uh, to come by that office. That was uh, uh, Christian's uh, handiwork, and they uh, we we're going gangbusters until we get cut off at the knees like everybody else. So yeah. we'll survive this and, and come out come we out will. the other end. We will. Hey, Bill, I have a question. Is Jim? Yeah. I sorry, I didn't respond before. I was fumbling for the unmute button. <laughs> um, I, w I was thinking it would be kind of cool if sometime if we could maybe have a uh, 
uh, group fly in up to the island. Yeah, that'd, be, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, as soon, as soon as we get through, you know, a little bit farther into this COVID thing, you know. Yeah, you know, maybe next summer, next spring, something like that. And <clears throat> we've had, we've had, we used to do regular hangar parties, mostly for our, <clears throat> our customers. This customer base is huge. <clears throat> that would be like an early fall thing. We would do that, you know, and have a barbecue in the hangar. Our hangar is like 10,000 square foot hangar. So we, we have tables and chairs and we put everything out or, or any other way you want to do it. It's fine. I'd love to have right. that. Good. Yeah. And that'd be a lot of fun. I, I think uh, we should try to organize that for, you know, maybe next spring sometime. Yeah. Uh, maybe for, just before tourism goes crazy up there. Yeah, it's more late for Memorial Day. Sure. So yeah. Well, let's talk about that in the future. That would yeah. be cool. I'd love That's to do that. Stay in touch. All right, cool. All right. Well, Mr. Walke, Paul, thank you. It was a uh, thanks for the uh, thanks to view into uh, uh, yeah, your flying and your organization. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, sir. So, all right, cool. So, um, Jim, what do you? Uh, uh, we talked about uh, restarting the IMC club. Is that right? Well, yeah, uh, we have been doing IMC club uh, uh, as we have kind of done a couple of the barn meetings and and uh, uh that didn't exactly work out very well because uh, the the space uh available at both at the barn and uh and at the conference room is kind of tight but i was thinking uh, i would like to uh maybe see if people are interested in doing the imc club meetings uh entirely via zoom uh, uh, Perhaps separate from the uh, uh, our normal monthly meeting. I don't know. Uh, uh, people can send us emails or something and uh, voice into their opinion whether they they'd want to do it. Now we get, you know, I get uh, invitations to various kinds of go to meetings and zooms from almost every aviation uh, venue there is. So this might be just one more and too many, uh, but uh, I, I, I think it, I'd, I'd like to go back to doing it. And, uh, so maybe we'll try a couple on uh, like uh, uh, two weeks opposed to this Thursday, just do an IMC club meeting for people who might be interested. Let's try it. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> Um, good. Hey, Jim. The, uh... Jim? Uh, yeah. I'd be really interested. Bob, Bob here. Uh, I'd be interested, especially during the winter when we're gone. I really miss those meetings, and, and you have some good speakers in. So uh, if you put it on Zoom, I think that'd be great. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll try to schedule one up, and uh, uh, maybe in two weeks, and uh, we'll get we'll get back to doing it. Uh, you know, Thursday nights at seven o'clock, um, maybe two weeks opposed to this meeting. All right, good. I like. All right, the uh, give you an update on the uh, on the uh, <clears throat> Revelation slipstream. See, Dick, I did remember the name of the thing. The uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, we had the wings down at, um, at Cadillac Aircraft Services with Joe Sprague, and uh, he's gangbusters. He's just busier than all, all sin. So we brought the, uh, brought the wings back, took them to uh, uh, the barn, what we call Williamsburg International, over on uh, Elk, Run, uh, Elk Lake Road. And uh, uh, Mick started the process, so we, um, we managed to uh, sand and uh, uh, using a... a Polytone? I can't remember what it is. <laughs> we got the wings sealed, and they, uh, they, they it's pretty amazing. You, uh, you use glue, you, you work it in, and they, uh, uh, they tighten right up. The fabric is, is as taut as the original fabric. <laughs> We've got the finished coat, which uh, will fly sometime this week. And then take the wings to uh, down to Lake Ann. <clears throat> uh, got the uh, carburetors rehung on the uh, on the MZ202 engine. And the uh, uh, I've got to go down and uh, solder together the uh, the control cables. So 
hand count the, uh, get a good count of the fasteners because we really are concerned about uh, using the, the old corroded fasteners on the, on the empanage and the wings. The, uh, uh, the only fly in the ointment, it's a big fly, is that uh, I talked with uh, oh, Sam uh, Heater and uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I started out a discussion about, uh, uh, about NOTAMs, excuse me, about military training routes because I couldn't find anywhere they're active. And as, uh, as I and a number of the others fly for the Coast Guard Auxiliary, we're on the coast, down low, and the, uh, in the altitude where they are. So Sam uh, showed me how to fly, find the uh, MTRs. So I managed to do it myself again two times, which is pretty amazing for me. So we'll get that published. And then uh, uh, the other fellow, uh, when I talk about the, uh, this uh, slipstream, Dick helped me, what's the name of it? We just call it the fat ultralight. It was, uh, it was originally built as a two-seater ultralight and uh, uh, it was never registered. So uh, I was told we could register as experimental exhibition when I talked to FISDO last year and it, Timothy Sokol is the guy who said, just be careful. So uh, I've been going back and forth with the FISDO. They're all, uh, uh, none of them are in the office, so it's tough to get a hold of them. So we'll find out what we got our hands around with that. We also picked up a uh, Benson gyrocopter. <clears throat> for those of uh, for those of you lower than about uh, 90 years old, uh, Benson was a uh, was pretty much the starters for uh, gyrocopters. And the uh, what we have is a uh, is a glider because you can tell it's got a Schweitzer hook at the front of it. Uh, we picked it up because it has two Schweitzer uh, uh, factory blades, which we should uh, be able to get some money for that. And that's the why we that's why we picked it up. The uh, I think the, uh, once we get the uh, once we get the fat ultralight out of the way, we'll finish the building, and then uh, well, by this fall we should be uh, we should be able to start on the Zenith CH 750. So that's what we got from that end of the world. Uh, Brian Cox didn't make it. Rats. The uh, <clears throat> we're not going to uh, do Young Eagles uh, just because of social distancing. Uh, although I heard uh, some other chapters are doing it. Uh, I, Oshkosh just came out with a Young Eagles workshop program, which Brian is looking at. Let's see if we can uh, uh, fire that up. And the, uh, it's just too early to tell. Uh, and it's just too early to tell, to tell in general. It's, I think it's going to be the fall before we get a good sense of what, we, what we're surrounded by. So any questions on that? Oh, the, uh, uh, the last and uh, the other thing is uh, we're in the process of selling a, a one of our deceased members, uh, uh, Rans S6SE, and the uh, so that's been an interesting procedure uh, getting that done. We've had uh, Stimics had a couple of nibbles, a couple of a uh, couple of good bites, and we're putting together the uh, a sales contract. And they uh, hope to have somebody up there within the next week or two. I hope, Mike. Right? Yeah. Bill, you got me. Yeah, got you. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, I, I'm disappointed. I think that fellow from Texas who I allowed to contact Lindy directly at her, okay, yeah. um, he never sent his promised deposit. So, you know, I think we broom him and there's other people interested. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. Yeah, they, I, I agree. Let's just keep moving. We have that uh, fellow from uh, from Georgia who said he's going to Yep, there's he had uh, he had a house turned down in an air, airplane crash, so I'm not sure about his <laughs> skills, but if he's interested, yeah. we'll sell. So, well, so, tell, and, tell everybody about tell everybody about his antics in the uh, where is he? New Guinea or yeah, something? Where was he? Papua New Guinea. He's, the, the guy's the missionary. He grew up in the missionary world from the time he's two, and he's uh, you know, he's using uh, he's using Ultra Part 103s to fly in and out of the uh, villages there, which is Pretty amazing, and the uh, I don't know if I'd want to fly over the jungle and, and with a behind a 582 Protex. So. <laughs> That's what they're doing, yeah, yeah for for yeah. a long time. So, they, That's uh, pretty cool. Stuff. Yeah, that's pretty pretty amazing. So so we're working on that, and out of uh, we've uh, we've been given a uh, uh, assembly table, which is uh, one of the things we really need to assemble this CH in almost any airplane, and. Uh, one of the big tasks coming up is is moving that from Lindy's place to uh, which is Lake Ann over to uh, Williamsburg. But once we get that, we'll, well, 
we've got an airplane to build. And there you go. Uh, Pretty cool. Yeah. Dick sent the financials. No change from last month, right, Dick? No. We're just. We're, you're muted there, Richard. You're still muted. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Our finances are in savings. We have $51. In uh, checking right now, we have uh, $1,615.10. We have a check that hasn't gone through yet to the state of Michigan for the corporate for $20. So we have. Uh, Fifteen hundred and ninety-five dollars and ten cents of cash in the checking, and then uh, six hundred dollars of that is a loan for from four of the members. Right. Yep. So we have just. Uh, oh, we have about a one thousand and forty-six dollars and ten cents right now. Belongs to the club. <laughs> that belongs right. to the club, and then I think. We owe quite a few people for parts for the heavy ultralight yep. and <laughs> other yep. things. So that you know that uh, that bank account is one of the, one of the things that's driving us with the uh, with this as as Dick so tastely said the heavy ultralight. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, we're selling that. We we got this Benson. Uh, we're gonna sell that and just bring money into the into the chapter. Uh, uh, we we're given an uh, uh, 0320 and uh, we we're trying to sell the uh, crank and the cases out of that. Now, all this is, is to get money in the chapter until we can start generating money through uh, pancake breakfasts, flying, and the like. So that's uh, that's where we are financially. And so, uh, Jim Serby, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, what's the story on the 320? That's not the one that was going to go in the zenith, huh? No, we got a. Uh, uh, turns out we got an old boom operator, uh, Bill Barber, who managed to uh, uh, buy a, uh, get us. Uh, we bought an O two thirty five for fifteen hundred bucks, and that's usually about five six thousand bucks. So that's sitting in the, mm -hmm. in, the in the barn, and we'll hang that on the nose. The O three twenty is by a old a retired IA friend of mine, and he he said come down and get it. So the uh, We'll sell it wherever we can. Uh, she's got a good crank, and the uh, get out of here. And uh, so yeah. we'll sell what we can. If we, if we, I got a uh, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, excuse me. Uh, it's just, it's so uh, and we're just we're gonna hold on. We've been man, we've been man, we've managed to be able to uh, uh, have the lease under no cost to us and. Uh, through the gracious uh, work of uh, F Flight, and the uh, you know, once the once the season turns, uh, you know, once the season turns good, we can start bringing in some money. So, Tim Serby, what do you got? Unmute, Jim. Oop, sorry. Uh, I was going to ask Justin. We were talked about get, trying to get some specs for the uh, to set up a simulator, and I uh, wonder if we had any progress on that. I, I I'd like to kind of hit the members up for a fundraiser over the winter time to see if we could uh, get ready for young eagles in the spring by having a simulator worth the name for them uh, to 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 uh, run in conjunction with young eagles flights. Yeah. So. Um, the specs are actually probably the easiest part. It's just uh, kind of figuring out where in the, the budget. So right now the focus was on kind of a more premium computer that we had a few ideas of some, uh, some um, people around Traverse City who may be willing to donate uh, pretty much the, the money to build that style of computer. Um, so that's what I'm focusing on right now is kind of the higher end, like a really good one that, that would do what we uh, uh, would really like it to. And then uh, we can kind of scale that back and look at more of a budget gaming computer if we are trying to um, just kind of get it done in a more you know, uh, achievable budget for kind of where we're at right now. 
So um, yeah, I'm working with a, a friend of mine down in Bay City who kind of specializes in networking and computer building, and he's got a full simulator in his basement. So I'll, right. I'll keep you guys posted kind of on that. But yeah, that is a work in progress, and we'll turn, uh, it'll probably be like cool. three different options, and we can kind of see what what fits best and how to achieve either of them. Are you, are you thinking about putting a monitor in on that uh, list as well, or? Yep, that'll be item okay. number one, and then okay. your uh, stuff after that. So, because the yeah, the monitor we have the computer right now um, that you know it, it works. It'll uh, kind of do the base of what we need, uh, and kind of the monitors to hold back right there. So, yeah, we'll we'll start with a nicer monitor, and then we'll see where we can uh, kind of make a nicer simulator so that everyone can uh, benefit from it at the office. Cool, thanks. Yep. Anybody else? Anybody? All right. So uh, two weeks from now, uh, IMC Club. We'll get the uh, we'll get the word out, and then uh, uh, next month uh, we got another speaker, uh, Will Rondo, who's uh, uh, hiding out in Lake City for the summer, and the um, and uh, he's that. Are you back in Nashville? No, you're still in Lake City, aren't you, Will? Yeah, I'm still here till uh, next week. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, he, he retreats to uh, Nashville. Yeah, and I, yeah, I belong to the chapter 863 down there in Lebanon, Tennessee. So okay, good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so we'll work this some of the details out, but uh, I'll I'll give you my uh, safety lecture next month. Yep, good. All right, we look forward to that. Anybody got suggestions or other people we'd like to uh, sp uh, meet or speak with? Uh, you know, holler holler at us. We're uh, uh, one of the one of the things we're bound to term, determined to do is get the word out about 234 and be a, a source of information and uh, and fun at the uh, at uh, Traverse City. So, hey, Christian, welcome back. Thank you. Just walked in the door. <laughs> Don't yes, you did. Been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep your eyes out for Christian, gentlemen. All right. I I think that's it. Anybody else? Yeah. Hey, Bill. Yeah. How big? How big is that table? You need to move. Uh, it's it's uh, what ten foot long, Rick Dick. No, it's longer than that. Oh. That's probably, probably about fifteen, eighteen foot. We're, and it's a it's uh you could you could probably uh, you could put put the empanage for a B fifty two on it. It's, it's that <laughs> it's that big and that heavy. <laughs> but. So we'll uh, uh right now it's covered with BMW parts and the. Uh, uh, we're also selling the uh, uh, Doug's uh, Luscombe parts, so and the uh, uh, so we'll, we'll get that cleared out and uh, probably this Paul will move it. It's it's going to be a, a it's going to be a multi moves. It's going to take a couple big trailers. And the uh, um, th thing is, it's solid as a rock. It's going to be great for building an airplane. So I think we'll, that uh, should fit on that should fit on Wendy's trailer. Yeah. I don't know about I don't know about the weight. We you may need to call uh, M dot. I don't think we <laughs> big fella. So so that's what we've got to look forward to. All right, gentlemen. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yep.